Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calderness. This episode we're going to be talking about some WizKids website deals. Uh, we're going to go over a Thread Dead Redemption on a review. Uh, man, I don't even I don't even want to spoil it, but it's it's probably one of our best Thread Deads we've done. I I love it. Uh, we're going to answer some listener questions. Uh, so like always, howdy howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, the back some more. Let the cat in because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, and um, I, you can't, you can't do the Scooby Doo thing yet. We we have to have a word from our sponsor. Hi there. I'm Jack Monroe. Here to talk to you more about the incredibly cool things and cool stuff you can get at CoolStuffInc.com. But just so you know. Just to go back to the whole selling to them and everything, and why you should sell to them. Not only, like I said a few weeks ago, do they pay you friends and family, but if you choose to get in-store credit, they give you a 35% bonus for selling to them in-store, which is an entire 10% more than a, than a certain amphibious life form and disgusting cave-delling troll people uh, will give you on their website. So, like always... Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And hey, use code DIAL5, that's D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your order. Tell them Jack sent you. CoolStuffInc.com. Hey, thanks, Jack. Um, that was cool. Appreciate it, bro. Uh, have fun. Anyways, now, joining me in the studio is my... Uh, my, I almost said my co-host, but I, I need to say your Dial H for Hero Clicks champion, the Billion Clicks Bruce. What is, what's going on, Simeon? Yeah, you got to keep what's saying up? that until it changes, which it yeah. may never do. So, yeah, I, yeah, Ooh, cool we want it. I want it to. Anakin want Skywalker to, but... Force Spirit for twenty dollars. It's just like a Anakin clear Skywalker version Force of Spirit Anakin Skywalker. Too? Yeah. Ooh, will he actually be a good good dad? I guess that's him at his best, right? Technically, that's him being Dead. the best yeah. dad. That's yeah, probably Ted. the best he gets. <laughs> yeah. uh, nah, Good dude. I Anakin. I love these daily sales. That cool stuff. Think this, this isn't even like sponsored talk right now. I just you know picked up. I said a few weeks ago, Marvel um, villainous for like twenty five bucks. That was a great sale, half off. Um, I picked up the Doom board game. For like twelve dollars off recently, when that like got back in stock, they only have one more left in stock, and and right now they have a brick of rise and fall for seventy bucks. That's just insane to me. Sixty nine ninety nine, nice. You know what I mean? Like that's <laughs> that's great. Like it actually, like, it is pretty good. It's a pretty had, solid price. If you had waited till now to pick up rise and fall sealed product, that's probably I, one of the best. Uh, well, I'm going to him. Going to a sealed tournament this weekend, and it's going to be using Rise and Fall. And I, I honestly, I want to buy this brick and be like, "Hey, can I not give my store money and use these incredibly way cheaper boosters instead of paying, you know, because I'm going to pay thirty dollars for two boosters tomorrow, right? Versus double that for 40, yeah, 10 double that for ten. It's yeah. Anyways, support your local game store, but." Still be smart with your money and realize there's some good deals out there. Hey, Simeon, what what made you happy this week, my man? What made me happy this week is after approximately a little over three years, I'm finally upgrading my phone. So Ooh. I'm going from the Samsung Galaxy 7, whatever. Uh, I don't think it was like a plus or a minus or any of those things. It was just a Galaxy 7. I'm going from Galaxy. that to a, a new phone. And uh, that means that I'm essentially paying for a really expensive camera that I can occasionally call people on or receive spam calls on. And boy, oh boy, can't wait to get back to some spam calls because I haven't had any of those recently. So 
really want someone to ask me if I'm selling my phone or my house or, you know, all the things that people ask. Hey, Simeon, did you know that we've actually been calling to try to reach you about your car's extended warranty? Um, just think you might need to know that we have been calling to try to reach you about your car's extended warranty. And yeah, it's going to be up. So you need to, I don't know. I knew they'd give get a hold like, of me somehow. Give yeah. us like money for that. I yeah, I work for them. I'm sorry. Call me. I, My favorite is like, there's, there's a lot of gumption that these, uh, new agey, uh, the current spam callers have now, because I used to dissuade them by being like, Oh, you have the wrong number. And they'd say, okay, thanks. And then they'd, you know, hang up. No, no, no. Someone called me and they said, hi, where like, is so-and-so there? And I said, nope, sorry, you have the wrong number. And then she said, well, that's okay. Do you have any property that you're interested in selling? Uh, and I was like, I'm not even the person you were oh, trying gosh. to get a hold of. You, you'll you just take anything at this point, apparently. Like, yeah, yeah, they just... Well, hey, a new phone is great, though. And I think upgrade, like, I think it's like a painful like pill. It's hard pill to swallow right away. But uh, I think you're gonna enjoy it. Are you getting an iPhone? Are you getting a new Galaxy? No, you... it's gonna yeah, it's gonna stick with the Samsung slash Big like Android family. Um, Sorry to hear that. So yeah, Sorry like I, I will continue to have the uh, the best phone on the market comparatively, or at least <laughs> that's that's not even true. It's not the best phone on the market, but um, I just wanted to say something bad about iPhone. No, it's fine. A non fruit related. Uh, phone plan yeah that's what i meant yeah. to say i i probably won't ever switch from my phone just because it's what i've always had and i don't want to have to try to learn a whole new system as i uh set my ways but no that's awesome yeah glad you got getting a new phone glad you get to uh live the spam free life for the next few or last couple weeks or whatever it's beautiful true. i've beautiful. been thinking about so I don't know how accurate it is, but according to the Google Fi commercials that I've been slammed with lately, hello, Google Fi, a phone plan that phone can. plan that can, yeah. yeah. Like Everyone young. will probably have that jingle stuck in their head. Uh, cause Did you know you awful. can uh, change your phone plan from, from your couch? Yeah, like, and also <laughs> uh, goodbye endless spam. Yeah, Google apparently. Fi, a phone plan that can, wow. So great. Uh, I actually have looked into switching to them, though, because, and this is not an ad, uh, but, uh, you know, after hearing that ad for so long, I was like, I better check out Google Fi just to see what it is about. And uh, the coverage looks kind of bad. Not going to lie. It does not look like a lot of states will have full coverage, at least 4G or 5G. I don't know if you'll still have, like, I don't know if 3G is a thing anymore, if you can actually make a call, but uh, coverage isn't great. But uh, the price is actually pretty reasonable if you have like three people jumping on the same plan. Pretty decent prices. Oh, yeah. I don't know how it compares to like Smart Talk or uh, Boost, but at least compared to Verizon, which is what I still have, it's not too bad. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's what I use, so... I I think it's one of those commercials where... Have you heard the... Um, we're getting off on a bad tangent here. Uh, have you heard those uh, new Coke flavor commercials? No. That has been the Google Fi for me. Oh, wait. I is feel that like the... Uh, it's I the have to Coke. try you it have first. You have to try it. Yeah, try yeah. it first. Okay. They yes, always I, say, I have to I have try to. it first. Yeah, I have been bombarded with those on the radio, on, like, YouTube ads. I don't know if they know... That I normally, like, if I ever drink pop, which I never do, it's normally, like, a Coke or something. But it's, like, I am, like, almost itching to try this new Coke because I just get bombarded everywhere. It's, like, maybe I do have to try it first. Maybe it is the best Coke ever. And I'm, like, no. Don't. Don't. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Don't do it. Don't give in to their marketing schemes. Um, But, yeah. The patrons definitely know what my least favorite ad that i've ever put up was um and i'm not gonna go back and i'm not gonna keep the tangent going but yeah, yeah uh, that was hard. bud light seltzer hard uh, seltzer yeah hard bud light hard seltzer hard seltzer not that i guess it would be a soft one no but yeah even though it's light so you'd think like oh maybe the light means light on uh how hard it is no no it's just bud light for no reason yeah uh what made me happy this week 
since we're going to be talking about what made us happy for 20 minutes today anyways um was it was my birthday and i went uh, out to eat at a restaurant in sioux falls so it's called carnival never been there before um and uh, i'm gonna try not to like butcher all the names but basically, never, never been there before. It is a Brazilian style restaurant, which I believe what they called the style of food they were serving us was rodi- rodizio. And I, if I butcher that, I'm sorry. Um, but basically, you have these little little button sticker things. Little, uh, it's like a little coaster they give you. On one side it says it's red and says no, thank you. On one side it says green and says yes, please. Uh, and you just sit at your table, and people just walk around with food. And if you have it on green, they'll stop by the table and be like, hey, do you want some more barbecue pork or Parmesan chicken or flank steak or whatever? And it's on these big sticks and, and they like cut it hold, off for you. You just hold it up and you're just like, or you just have it facing up. It's just it's just on the table. Yeah. So okay. if it's just, they'll see it on your table, like if it's facing up green or red. Uh, so we kind of trolled the guy <laughs> one time where I was like, okay, let's have both our buttons on like red, the little coaster things, have them on red. And then as he walks by us, flip it to green really quick and see what happens. And no joke, he walks, he like walks by, we flip it really quick to green and he like does like a little heel turn spin and is like, do you guys want some of this? (laughs) And it was hilarious. Oh, he's a professional. He was good. Dude, he was on it. I don't know if you thought you'd break his stride. Never going to break his stride. Yeah. Oh, dang it, Simeon. Yeah. (laughs) Never going to tear him down. (laughs) Uh Oh. We haven't released that video. Why don't you just take your uh, rowboat to China and get the hell out of here? How does that sound? How does that sound? Um, yeah, I caught your, your music reference. Mm-hmm. I can get more than just Toby Keith, Brad Paisley. <laughs> um, anyways, but yeah, dude, it was so good. And it, so it was expensive. Um, and it was also, they were like, hey, are you celebrating anything like a birthday or an anniversary? And I just like look at the other person. And I'm like, if you want to say it, you can say it. I'm not going to say it. And they're like, yeah, we're celebrating a birthday. And I'm like, Please don't sing to me. Please don't sing. Like, you know, that's just the worst. And they didn't. They actually gave me a little card and then like a dessert. But there was no like weird, awkward, get all the employees up and sing happy birthday. I very, I very much appreciated that. That was pretty awesome. But seriously, if there is a carnival, I don't know if this is purely a Sioux Falls restaurant or what it is, but they're just walking around with hunks of meat. They cut them off for you and you just... It just keep coming. It's just endless. It's like yeah. as long as you can eat, you just keep getting more. And it was awesome. It was delicious. Like that sounds they also have like a salad cool. bar. Dude, it was great. I honestly, um, if it was so if it was like ten more ten dollars less, I would probably go there more consistently. But at the price, I you know, I think it's like forty bucks for a meal. So it is relatively like expensive for a single meal type of deal, but it is like endless buffet style and it's really good quality food. But for 40 bucks, like, it was good. It okay. was really good. I can see that, like, being, like, a, a treat yourself, take someone out, like, nice place to eat, you know, type of deal. The atmosphere is cool. You don't have to go anywhere. Like, the waiter was on top of it, filling up our waters, whatever, you know, yeah. killing it. When I think of nice place to eat, uh, take someone out kind of thing, like, I, I definitely think of buffet-style foods. <laughs> okay. All right, Simeon. No. That's not... <laughs> No, I, it does combine two things that I uh, really enjoy about restaurants, and that's like a la carte options. And then also, um, I like places that like this is the food we make, and we don't make a ton of, you know, it's not like the the Applebee's where we've got everything from shrimp to pasta to chicken to steak. It's like we specialize in this style of food. And so we make this style of food, and you may have it if you wish. Yeah, that's the kind of restaurants that I like because they usually knock that style out of food out of the park. Um, they kill it. Not all. I mean, not every restaurant's the same, obviously. But yeah, that's what I normally lean towards if I'm going to a restaurant is the ones that are like they don't have a huge menu, but the menu they do have is all good. That's why you like raising cane so much. Yeah, is that, is that, we have is that chicken takeaway? tender. <laughs> How Texas would you like chicken toast, tender? <laughs> sauce, coleslaw. Would you like fry? We also have fry. Uh, that's. I think that was the whole menu. Wow, I that did it. Enti- I named Although technically, raising uh, entire you menu. Can, 
you can order a chicken sandwich, which is <laughs> chicken, chicken tender on <laughs> between <bread>. two pieces <laughs> of bread. <laughs> <laughs> only uh, it was the Texas toast. That's what I should pitch to him. Uh, Use your Texas yes. toast for that sandwich, you fools. You've got a whole extra set of bread that you don't need for your menu. That's true. That is pretty stupid of them. You you better go tell Kane that he's he's idiotic. Well, Kane is the dog, and I think oh, they're up to like dog? Kane five now because yeah. Oh yeah. I thought it was the guy. What's the guy's name? The, oh, so that's why he's got the dog in every picture with him. Uh. Uh, I don't know. He hung out with Snoop Dogg, and we put up his advertisement, but I can't remember right, his let's name. Stop. Let's stop. He um, did, though. It was on, like, the was it really? Discovery Channel. Yeah. The cane dog itself? No, the guy. Hung out? The guy, okay. The... the guy hung out with Snoop Dogg. Oh. Yeah, you thought I was making a joke because the dog... And Snoop Dogg. Ha. That yeah. would have been a good joke, but sadly, I just stumbled into that. No, you were that. just telling me uh, true facts about my... Yeah, family. I know too much about Raising Canes. Uh, yeah, way too much. Well, seeing as how we're like 40 minutes in to this podcast, and we've discussed basically zero hero clicks, let's, uh, let's jump into the news, shall we? I hope you guys at least got something out of that conversation, though, because it, it was fun. Yeah, uh, if you hey, liked all that me... free advertising, <laughs> here's some more free advertising that we're going to give to a, yet oh, another not, company. Out another company. Hey, do you, did you ever wish that when you when you bought some some hero clicks, you would also get more hero clicks? Hey, WizKids, apparently Disney Plus Day is a thing. Don't know how I feel about that being a quote unquote holiday or whatever they're trying to do. Uh, haven't made an opinion on that yet. But when you buy some Marvel Hero Clicks off the WizKid store, they're giving you uh, a Scarlet Witch. Now, I, I will say one thing, just so no one gets confused. It is the uh, 2020 LE Scarlet Witch, which you were able to get in 2020. It's not an exclusive. It's not new. It's just like sort of a little something for free, you know. So if this, you know, and I think it's 5% off right now on the website you have to buy a marvel product um and that's like neat i guess like uh it's not a good figure by any means at all it's kind of like it's neat slash kind of bad yeah um, it's a, so. a fine casual piece um so yeah. it's this it's also the same sculpt as the super rare from the uncanny x-men set it'll be that old uh sculpt s- scale it's not going to be the yeah. new like rise and fall it's scale a little smaller yeah so uh, I've used this piece a handful of times, and it performs fine in a casual setting. It's not going to win you every game. It's not going to do anything super crazy. Uh, it's a five-range running shot Pensai super prob, uh, super sense piece. And for 75 points, an outwit does make mincemeat of this piece. So yeah, it's it's fine. Um the sculpt's a cool sculpt if you did, weren't playing an Uncanny X-Men and you didn't go to any of the WKOs when this came out. At the very least, more of these will be out in the secondary market, I guess, after this. Yep. So, yeah, they're going to kind of flow the secondary market. But, yeah, so you have until the 14th of November uh, to get an order, which will be this Sunday. And, yeah, 5% off on, I think, Marvel products. And then you get a little, or whatever, Disney products. I don't know how many Disney products they have on here that aren't Marvel, but uh, yeah, get a little Scarlet Witch. Now, I will say one thing that is also kind of cool. If you get 50 bucks worth of stuff, you will get a Krampus miniature. Uh, it's not the, like, hero clicks like Krampus. It is uh, just, like, just a, a promo. Just It is a pre-painted miniature, which is cool, too, but it's just, like, kind of, like, just a miniature. It's got a little kid in his, in his little weird bag, like, barrel thing on yeah. his back. I and feel like he's got the, a real uh... gross long tongue with his little <laughs> lashy pieces of wheat or whatever he's going to lash you with or something weird. So rather than this child being terrified, you, you have he to looks look kind at the sculpt. of he annoyed, looks, right? Yeah, he looks very annoyed to be inconvenienced <laughs> like, in this way. He's his like, arms are I crossed. can't wait till Krampus gets me back to wherever so I can complain to Krampus's manager about this experience. That's what like right. the face this kid is giving off. Yeah. He's so just like <laughs> unimpressed that he has been abducted by Krampus. It's it's yeah. pretty funny. Oh man. 
Krampus is pretty but, terrifying, but this kid is not at yeah, all scared. Yeah, he's no, just, Krampus is really scary. He's like, he's I was going to open up my bike and my Razor scooter. To this I don't know what kids get for Christmas anymore. Um, clearly, Razor scooter was the last like, gift I got. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to open my pet rock, maybe build something <laughs> on my light bright, my etch sketch Yeah. What year do you think this kid is being kidnapped from? I don't know, but he is very upset that like his Christmas has been cut short and he's just yeah it's not even it's he's not even terrified anymore it's like he's the just mild mad. inconvenience of Krampus yeah. <laughs> kidnapping him um but yeah so like that's going on i think it's uh let me double check what the code is that you need to put in checkout i believe it's disney plus day so like all caps disney plus plus not the sign uh disney plus day so yeah if you want a little little scarlet witch you want to i i would say might as well if you're gonna buy something from here and you want the Scarlet Witch, I would say get the Krampus if you're interested in it as well. If you're not, whatever. Uh, I If I had to choose a product for you guys to get off here, I would say the Avengers versus Masters of Evil starter set. I do still believe that is the best starter set for new players. Um, you would just obviously have to use new rules to teach them now. I still think, though, as a starter set for figures that are cool and like knowledgeable for characters outside of like into comics, into comics, uh, it's the best one. Like it would be that or the Justice League. So it depends if they're a DC person or a Marvel person. But I think F4 is not good for newer people that aren't into comics. And I think Wonder Woman is not good for newer people that are not into comics because there's a bunch of people they don't know that are in those. So I think Master Evil also has, you know, the two best figures uh, in it, uh, being a Captain America and, of course, Captain America. Uh, so 25-point leadership. There's nothing, nothing bad about that. Anyways, that's my buy. Any Any product you would recommend? I think it's like 36 bucks on here. I think most of the starters are. I think it's a pretty solid ish price. Yeah. What's that? What's a product you might recommend um, that if if you didn't already own it, you'd be like, eh, I'll do it so, for Krampus. Slash yeah. Scarlet so Witch figure. here's the thing: um, to get the Scarlet Witch, you just have to make one of the Marvel purchases, and it. I I would yes. double check to make sure. Um, I think Jimmy <laughs> responded to a post, uh, being a, a WizKids employee, responded to a post, um, regarding some of the. Marvel stuff not working with that uh, Scarlet oh, Witch yeah. promo. So I okay. don't know which ones it were, but I would go with the Masters of Evil starter. It gets you some cool sculpts and plenty of them and actually usable figures. Uh, the Cosmic Clash starter isn't terrible. You don't get as many figures, but you do get some decent maps. And if you like Doom and Surfer, those are two good versions of those Very characters. Good versions, yeah. yeah. Uh, everything else on this, I will say, I think I have seen it on the secondary market for much cheaper. And for the sealed cheaper. product, if a store still has it in, it's probably cheaper in a brick and mortar store. Um, otherwise, most of the stuff like Black Widow movie, House of X, stuff like that, you're going to probably at this point be better off picking and choosing certain pieces rather than buying sealed from here. Um, but if you do choose to like grab the Masters of Evil starter to get that Scarlet Witch to then get Krampus, you could go to WizKids other like departments. So you could do uh, like That's the true. miniatures and terrain or board games. Um, their lifestyles product, which is just like oh, you can have a D and D hand forgot. holding an eyeball oh. or. A uh, weird Cthulhu weird. thing to mount to your wall for four hundred and seventy-two dollars. Jesus, mm. that is a mm. that's a mind flare, not a Cthulhu. Wow, uh, Simeon, something cheaper flare, not a that I will look wrong <laughs> with you. So clearly, uh, dang, I didn't look at all those cheap things that are on the other Dungeon and Dragons full sized drizzed foam statue, fifteen hundred and seventy-five dollars. Wow, wow. I hope that's like eight foot tall for that price. And I Did hope that's a real a steel time? sword for that price. Uh, but yeah, said it was like, oh, <laughs> what I was saying, you could grab some board games to make up the gap and get that Krampus. Uh, the Krampus is automatically applied to any over $50 purchase. Yes. So I imagine you don't have to, it doesn't have to be a singular item that's $50 or more. But yeah, if you're going that route, I think it'd be worth it to find something to bridge the gap and get that little miniature. You're already spending $36, $37. Might as well find something that's like another 14 Yeah, I think that's solid. And if you wanted to buy two Heroclix things, I think for the price, uh, 
a Masters of Evil starter and then also a Fantastic Four starter for about 70 bucks if you really want just to only get hero clicks and get also those two figures, that that would be fine as well. Uh, all right. Simeon, we have bringing it back. Uh, been a few months since we've taken a, a trip down the trail to a Thread Dead Redemption. Friend, I just wanted to play. Now, firstly, we ain't friends. Don't make no mistake on that subject. Now, secondly, he can't hardly see, let alone reason. Now, reasoning ain't never been one of my strong points neither, but see, and I do just fine. This is, you take the lead on this one. You found this. I'm excited. I, I will be a, uh, a, a bystander here uh, listening because I'm pumped. I am ready uh, for this, dude. This is hilarious. So uh, what have we got? What From we got the somehow here? still not defunct website of RPG.net, this thread takes us back to the year 2002 uh, and I'm not even going to, you know, it's it's a thread by Washu exclamation point up arrow zero up arrow to make like a little face, yes. I guess. I don't oh, know. Uh, Is that like an ASCII I face? I don't know what the heck. Um, so the review summary I will read is style five. Excellent. Substance two. Sparse. Uh, I'll do the little blurb here and then I'll get into the actual actually no I'm gonna do the big I'm gonna do the big review and then we'll get into the blurb so overview champions has too much number crunching Marvel superheroes role-playing game was too simple too simple also if you look into Marvel superheroes role-playing game this is me no longer reading it uh, if you look into that it is not too simple it is actually quite a headache. <laughs> Uh, I owned the pewter miniatures, but I guess it was like a cardboard. The pewter was like an expansion that you could get, but uh, cardboard was like the actual figures um, for that one. And it was a it was closer to a D and D style thing where you would say what you were gonna do, and then you would have to check. You'd have to make like a roll and a check, and so it'd be like, well. Are your is your character smart enough to do that? And then you'd add, you know, your modifier plus your D one hundred roll. And depending on what your like number was, it was a whole chart. It was, uh, it's not too simple for me. Apparently, I'm. Well, I'm you're done. not a, an experienced RPG dot net an RPG <laughs> RPG player guy. As we will find out later, they they are a different breed. Uh, so, DC <laughs> okay. Heroes role playing used logarithms okay and marvel saga was too abstract also for for being too abstract marvel saga looks a lot like marvel superheroes role-playing game that was too simple uh but i guess it can be too simple and too abstract so yes. added to this long list of superhero rpgs who mechanics were off the mark is whiz kids hero clicks a miniature game its stripped down version of mage knight prevents it from being a tactical miniature game the occasional special ability, a.k.a. superhero power, and added mechanics don't add the feel of a comic book. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty harsh already. Uh, okay. In both Hero Dang. Clicks and Mage Knight, each figure has four statistics. Speed, attack, defense, and damage. You fool. Hero Clicks also has range. Uh, what an idiot. Don't they know that's a modifiable <laughs> combat value? A statistic, if you would. Yeah. Each player has two actions per turn, depending on the size of his starting team or army. Granted, this is from the very first Hero Clicks iteration, yeah. so uh, a lot of this won't be applicable at all anymore. Uh, each figure may take up may take up to one action per turn. Speed is the number of spaces inches in Mage Knight. The character moves per action. To make an attack, you roll two six-sided die and add it to your character's attack value. If this total is greater than your opposing character's defense value, you hit, causing damage equal to the character's damage value. As characters take damage, their statistics change, usually decreasing, and they may lose or gain special abilities, aka superpowers. This is kept track of by the combat dial on which the figure is mounted upon. The wording of this is mm. just, it's great. Uh, that's it. Move or attack, close combat or ranged. In Mage Knight, you had action options, example formations, and in superhero RPGs, your character would usually have different attack or defense options. Your superhero were almost always available 
for one thing. But in Heroclix and Mage Knight, as your character takes damage and the dial rotates, special abilities tend to disappear, effectively removing your superhero powers. I've only played from two starters, so can't comment on the strategy of selecting your superhero game. The game is clearly targeted towards younger players and collectors. It says 14+. Okay. plus. Yeah, come on. Gosh, that's right on the our box. World, our, our world champion isn't even that old. Come on. Yeah, really. younger players <laughs> and collectors. Uh, uh, not to mention, no one no one that's younger and a collector could afford to collect hero clicks anymore. Who is the young collector? I don't know. Who, who is actually a, like a young... I'm a young collector. Richie I, Rich from I, the acquired... famous <laughs> yeah. movie like, of the same like, name. How much money they got to be collectors of anything? What are you talking... Like, I have, have like, McDonald's a bunch of... in my house. A handful of stuff. Can you imagine how awful it would be to work at that McDonald's? You <laughs> oh my sit God. around all day. Be waiting surrounded for by like this pompous child who is always you, you going serve. to have more money you gotta, than you will ever have. You yeah. serve like one customer. You serve Richie Rich or and or yeah. the Rich family, right? So you serve. And sometimes you know customers. he's just. Yeah, you know he's just going to like order stuff just for the fun of it sometimes. And be like, yeah. can you make me like. 40 McChickens. I want something <laughs> to throw at the geese. Can you? It's just like, yeah. Uh, I'd be like, yeah, man, sure I probably get paid a lot for, for this. Otherwise, it's just like you own a McDonald's. Like, or also, you know what I mean? Play on your phone all day, I guess. Because, like, only whenever he comes around, do you work? I don't know. Anyways, uh, what a tangent. That's the overview. <laughs> And yeah, that is the him just kind of mercilessly just dogging yeah. in early Infinity Challenge 2002 hero clicks. So, like, yeah, what a snob this, this dude. Uh, Washu was Washu. basing their uh, review off of the starters, which I do okay. not, I don't even know what the starters from yes. back in 2002 would have been. Yeah, we should have done a little bit of research before we started but, saying uh, yeah. much hero clicks. So, Infinity things that have changed starter. since then. Uh, most characters don't get worse from taking damage nowadays. They just change. They get different powers. Right. Uh, also, traits weren't a thing back then, and they definitely are now. So that's added to stuff. Special powers have added a lot of stuff. So I think Washu really needs to get back into the game and uh, yes. do another an updated review. Um, it was oh, it was edited in August of. 28 2017 15 years after oh, wow okay what was the edit can i find that yeah can is it like uh i can't can find the edit. was edited interesting yeah it was huh hmm okay uh i'm gonna talk a little bit about what he has to say about the miniatures here now uh we all know what like miniatures look like now with the updated sculpts and then what they looked like a year ago with like Shoot, I don't even know if I can. I can't even say a year ago because we've been having updated sculpts for a year, two years ago, I guess. Whatever. When the sculpts were like normal, what we've been used to, we've probably been used to these sculpts since about 2013 Superman era. These sculpts have been looking relatively the same-ish. Um, yeah, a little bit smaller, I guess. Around, anyways. But we know what hero sculpts look like now. We have the digital sculpting; it's amazing, it's beautiful. Um, and even as big and bulky as the old sculpts were, they weren't terrible. Like, they were they were all right. So this is what he has to say about the miniatures here. Uh, Heroclix is sold as pre-painted, randomly assorted starters. Ah, that's right. The starters were just two boosters. I forgot about that. Oh. That is weird. I always forget that. But yeah, no, he's right. The starters were, yeah, just two boosters, a play map. And as he says in quotations, everything you need to play. <laughs> uh and boosters for figures. The figures themselves look asterisk asterisk very asterisk asterisk nice. Okay. The white undercoat makes Hero figures brighter than their murky mage knight mage knight counterparts. Most faces don't look like blobs, and some even have pupils, cross-eyed pupils, <laughs> but pupils nonetheless. A black wash created a asterisk asterisk good asterisk asterisk. I don't know why this person likes doing this job on the black on red design of spider-man's costume i'm impressed i'm impressed that's the sentence period i'm impressed period but because the figures are essentially human sculptures and they're more fragile than their mage knight counterparts likewise the flying figures are mounted on clear plastic stands that look like dining tables from <laughs> ikea <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Whatever Flight happened bases. to the counters? And while the map looks better than RPG 25 millimeter play aids I've seen, it does, as one player put it, look like it was drawn in crayon. Ooh. Oh, those old maps were—they were, they were kinda, a little rough, kind of. Yeah. yeah, 
also yeah. pretty sparse. They'd like sometimes yes. just have like a clump of bush there and wasn't, a there clump wasn't of rock much going on. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Because it's a collectible game, just continue reading here, your first starters and boosters will be patchwork of heroes and villains. Oh, sure, in Mage Knight, it's odd when you have an orc and a dwarf on the same side, but when you have Jean Grey, Blade, and a thug, or an agent of Hydra working together, it's just plain strange. Hero Clicks does have special abilities for characters in the same team. They don't encourage teams, factions, as well as the formation rules in Mage Knight. We only played with the random figures from the two starters, so I don't know if characters typically found together in comic books work better together. And then there are duplicate figures. For CCGers, this won't be a big deal. But I don't usually hear RPGers say, hey, I bought a third edition Dungeons & Masters guide. It's just like the one I bought last week. Uh, interesting, I guess takeaway here about the whole randomness of it where it's like yeah you do realize it's a blind booster yeah and like that's not it's not an rpg this person no. is very much an rpg player and i think they themselves don't understand that hero clicks is just a tabletop miniatures game and it's not an rpg um i answer that I question see though, the yeah uh, go ahead teams do not get better when you when you have uh <laughs> people that would normally work together or so, factions as you would right uh, like unless they have a team abilities exclusively where it's like okay all the x-men have x-men technically they work better together right the people i don't have x-men um yeah, and, and theme I team prob is a thing but theme team prob is a thing um what else like i mean it's just a lot that's changed right it's like keywords helps uh theme team prob being a thing helps you know shared traits now like help obviously but even then like the team i want to wko with was like guy gardner sky tyrant jason wingard you know marvel like people that have never met each other basically um so he's not wrong where it's like a, yeah it doesn't really matter who you put on your team it can still be a good team because like good stuff is good and whatever uh i do think it's like but them working together is just plain strange I'm like man wait just if you only waited a couple of years and saw Master <laughs> Chief and, and Blanca and, and Batman on a team together Blackie with uh, Drago and two Robins. Yeah. yeah. Big Tony. <laughs> Wait, why is the vulture who's not the normal vulture putting on the Ock arms? Like, what's going on? Oh, you'll on? see. It's for um, comic accuracy. <laughs> it's for comic accuracy. Uh, and this guy can type. Oh my gosh. Uh, do you want to handle this next section? Yeah. So, so I, he says, so it's, so here's what's weird, right? He's, he talks like the sculpts are like, okay, but then he's like, just kind of poo poos on the, it being like random. So I'm like, well, yeah, right. it's a blind booster, which, which is so is, weird. I thought he would talk more about sculpts in the miniatures. The part of yeah. Review. The reviews don't um, like the review portion of miniatures is pretty <laughs> short comparatively. And it only half of it is actually about the miniatures. And then he talks about maps for a little bit. And then he talks about, how it's a collectible game and so you're like your patchwork or like what you can pull and stuff and so really like what he says about the miniatures is just pretty short and sweet um and i was not collecting miniatures back in the day back in when this was originally written so i don't i honestly don't know if this is sarcasm or if this person this washu thought that uh these figures did look kind of nice I don't know. I, w I lean towards sarcasm because most faces don't look like blobs, and some even have pupils. Seems like a very sarcastic yeah, thing to say. Sarcastic thing to say. Yeah, so I, I lean towards this not being a nice review as far as uh, what the miniatures look like, which is fair right. if you look at the old figures. They are kind of bad, um, at least some of them. So on to mechanics. Washu says... One miniatures designed Heroclix took from Mage Knight are different power levels, rookie, experienced, and veteran, with different point costs for each hero or villain. This allows a player flexibility in creating his superhero team. I say this tongue-in-cheek, but it also explains how Thor, I'm not sure if he's the present Heroclix set, in the present Heroclix set, kicks butt in his very own comic and becomes pretty boy milk toast in the Avengers. I mean, that's fair. What? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, like, how Thor in, like, a Thor series will be much oh. stronger than when he's in an yeah. Avengers series. Because they have yeah. to tone him down. Yeah. Right. Pretty boy milk toast Thor. Uh, 
For better or worse, it seems that the most powerful characters in the Marvel Universe have been scaled down to be playable. Fire Lord has a point value of 97, when it should be something like the Avogadro's number. Did you really just bring up the mole number thing? Are you serious? Yeah. Fire, okay, let's chill Avogadro's out with how number. powerful we think Fire Lord is. Yeah, okay. Fire Lord was once beaten by Spider-Man, so... Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if chill. he's as powerful as good old... Also, I don't think he understands, like, oh, he's only 97 points. To think that points equals good, like, higher the points means the better they yeah, are. not right? always. He's clearly not played that much, because Fire Lord <laughs> was, like, the best figure in yeah. that set. Fire Lord was <laughs> busted. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, good old Washu here only only looks at point value. <laughs> Should be something like Avogadro's number. Which, you know, that's a fair thing, though, because point values haven't really ever gotten like cinched in to be yeah they haven't never considered to be great would you say uh, like mirrored uh power like totally no yeah continue anyway whiz kids combat dial or as my friend ian <gasps> whoa could it be could it be uh as my friend ian calls it <laughs> the death spiral allows your character's abilities to weaken as it takes damage. In the case of Hulk, he gets stronger as he takes damage. Sweet! Conceptually, I find this far more realistic than most miniature games and RPGs, where you can swing a broadsword, chop off heads right and left, and have one hit point remaining. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually really did like that aspect, how if you get hit really hard and you're almost dead, you're not going to be able to do that much damage to your opponent. Like, you know, maybe right. you only have... A six it's almost like you should be damage. able to like you know fight at the same level where if you were like feeling good full health full stomach you know all healthy and stuff versus have been in a battle for however long and right. then yeah and i mean there's just, like, there's some characters that could do like a desperate one like last attack kind of thing sure so sometimes it makes sense you know if if you want to say was it banshee who has like a is it, I don't know. One of the new characters has like a 12 attack. Maybe it's Havoc. Has like a 12 attack on their last click. Sure. If you want to say like, you know, they they pulled it together and uh, had yeah. like one last big like attack kind of thing. But yeah, for the majority of characters, they should usually get uh, weaker, which isn't really common anymore. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they more so just change. Continued on. He says or Washu, whoever that is, says, uh, still, as characters take damage, they lose their superpowers, i.e. special abilities. Thus, in practice, the game dwindled down into tedious to hit dice rolling. Ah, yes, tedious dice rolling. And it was somewhat depressing watching my once mighty heroes being poked and prodded. A thug beat Fire Lord to death until they finally KO'd. <laughs> Well, you're just okay. bad at this game. If you're really bad at the Fire game, Lord yeah. Did, uh... You didn't, like, nuke Thug right away. What are you yeah. doing, bro? <laughs> you should have. You definitely should have. Uh, spe simplified rules, which were odd in Mage Knight, became absurd in Heroclix. For example, if your figure is adjacent to an opponent figure, your figure has only a 50% of breaking away, 50% chance of breaking away, successfully moving, and becomes unable to make ranged attacks it's strange when an imp can do this to a stone golem, but pathetic when a thug does this to, hello again, Fire Lord. You let Fire Lord get just based by, based a, thug? by a thug? This wow. guy, he's Fire really Lord's out of himself as a real dog player, why was, dude. Why is Fire Lord in walking distance of thug? Uh, figures block line of sight, so expendable figures can be used to protect valuable ones. In Mage Knight, we call this the imp shield. In Hero Clicks, we'll end up with the shield shield ha. Uh, because shield generics yeah critical hits cause an additional click of damage and in hero clicks if you roll doubles your opponent suffers knockback if a figure is knocked back into a wall he suffers an additional hit nope not anymore sadly uh, for fire lord uh. so fire lord took three clicks of damage one from the attacker one from the critical hit and one as he slammed into a wall from a Hydra gun. Right. Unlike Mage Knight, you can make a ranged attack against an opposing or adjacent to a friendly figure. Like Mage Knight, you cannot make a ranged attack if you are adjacent to an opposing figure. 
this is going yeah. in circles here. Uh, so while Thug is dancing around Fire Lord, preventing Fire Lord from using his range attack and special ability, the Hydra agent is picking him off with a stun gun. Bang. So Bang. yeah, it's fire, it sounds like Fire Lord was getting uh, attacked by two characters at once, which, I mean, I think, I think good old Washu here was just being bested by someone that was better at the game and now they're mad I think about Washu it. Washu is mad because that's how mad. I'm reading this. They're like, I had to better figure and my opponent just outplayed me and it's really mean. Yeah. Uh, like this game should be changed. <laughs> Special abilities also suffer simplicity syndrome. <laughs> With super strength you can pick up objects, but not terrain. Okay. What? You yeah. wanna wait, wait. You what? should be you able to pick, pick up, up map terrain? Terrain. What, do you, what does he mean? I yeah. Pull the tree out of the ground. What, that is the map. What terrain is there to, for you to physically show you're picking it up? <laughs> what are you talking about? Thus, you can pick up dumpsters, but you can't tear out trees. Oh my, <laughs> dude, this guy is actually brain dead. <laughs> he, this dude is an idiot. Uh, telekinesis only affects objects next to the figure, not line of sight. Also, with TK, you can move adjacent friendly figures 10 spaces farther than most figures can move so you oh, can i didn't do know a cannonball TK special range. except you're using gene gray and she'll do it with anyone what a tramp wow whoa whoa <laughs> wash hey, you we stand our queen gene gray yeah. let's chill out there bro yikes wow i mean i get it yeah but dang uh i think you know super strength it would have been cool had Super Strength had like a TK aspect to it where um, like maybe you could only put somebody, place someone within like the same column or row or something like that. Like an, uh, I don't know, like a fastball special kind of thing. But yeah, this was also back in the day when telekinesis Dude. was 10 squares. So definitely a much better version than currently. Rules added to the game didn't capture that comic book feel. Flying characters may carry any other characters. I suspect Rogue is zipping Xavier around the block by holding his hover chair, not by holding his arms. The distance of knockback is one square, quotation, inch per click of damage. While this keeps figures from flying off the map, Fire Lord's cosmic power is equivalent to... Oh, is the equivalent of five rolls of nickels held by a thug. Okay. So the, the thug has knuckle dusters, and he's sure. really stuck on the fact that the thug knocked out Fire Lord. Uh, the chance of knockback occurring as a result of hitting, not damage. Knockback occurs if you successfully hit and roll doubles. If Hulk rolls doubles, Fire Lord has knockback. If Kitty Pride rolls doubles, Fire Lord has knockback. If my dead cat that got rolled over by a steamroller rolls doubles, Fire Lord has knockback. Man. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think this guy, he it's thinks he rolls doubles as much as WizKids thinks people roll doubles whenever yeah. they put, like, when this character rolls doubles and, like, a special Anyone attack. can knock Fire Lord into a wall if I positioned terribly and they happen to roll doubles. So, uh, sorry, going back to, like, the Thug Fire Lord thing. So, Thug's highest speed value is 6, while Fire Lord's lowest range is 6 as well. Versus on any other version of Fire Lord, it's 8. So, if yeah. he had a veteran Thug and a veteran Fire Lord, the well, veteran the Thug should never point get Fire Lord. Lord. So then, yes, the, that Fire Lord should never get based by Thug, unless, of course, Jean Grey is doing it with anybody, as he likes to say. <laughs> Uh, and just TK, TK and, thug and these up. thugs all around. Even then, Veteran Thug has a 7 attack value to Veteran Fire Lord's 17 defense needing a 10 to hit. So that must have been a but high clearly, attack roll. Yeah, it was, no, it was a crit him. hit. So it oh, was, it was one oh, that, from okay. Thug, one, one from, from the thug. crit hit, and then one from the wall. Wow. But Which still wait, puts Fire, Fire Lord not have toughness a, or anything? No, he has barrier. Uh, Fire Lord is the squishiest man in the universe okay. so that does take fire lord down to like a 10 or 9 for one uh at close which yeah he falls off pretty yeah. fast so uh for, well actually no he'd, he'd have two damage sorry if it's the 97.1 takes one two three he'd, yeah, he'd be a 10 for two which is still compared to thug's 14 defense to thug. but yeah. the problem is it sounds like 
uh, Washu was trying to break away with Fire Lord. Which, oh, as we know, it's just, stupid. You just punch the thug. Yeah, you just get rid of the thug. I I don't think after those last few videos and last few tournaments that I've played in <laughs> and missed the amount of breakaways I've missed, I think I'm never gonna roll for breakaway ever again. Yeah, I, I genuinely, a, it's it's burned me very. It's bad. one of the reasons I absolutely love a figure with sidestep and flight or tk like sidestep tk or something because yeah, yeah. being able to move up to somebody uh, especially if my opponent like bases me with someone with poison being able to move up to one of my friendly characters and just like sidestep yank them out of danger is real nice yeah uh, side to fight to anyway, break sorry. away keep, sucks uh yeah. keep going you got us off on a tangent here we, <laughs> yeah. we can't so, stop Owashu's amazing out, uh, yeah. review. Let's see how, how much madness Owashu gets into finishing out the mechanics here. Yet, while some rules were... So, yeah, we ended with uh, Fire Lord getting knocked back by even a dead cat. Or I assume, it, yeah, dead cat that was rolled over by a steamroller, sorry. Uh, so, finishing out the mechanics section. Yet, while some rules were simplified, some rules seemed burden, burdensome. Remember that Monster Master rules of mage knight dungeons a hovering character may move through opposing characters and blocking terrain a hovering character's movement is not affected by hindering terrain hovering characters may change elevation and even hover on top of elevated terrain for purposes of breaking away and close combat considering consider the hovering character to be at the level of elevation on the figures the figures base is on an attacker on elevated terrain can target a grounded character as long as the only blocking terrain the line of fire crosses is part of the square the attacker occupies. Line of sight from an elevated attacker is not blocked or hindered by any other grounded figures or grounded hindering terrain unless the terrain occupies the same square as the target. How much would would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood sheesh so yeah they're this is literally just so reading he's, off just he's complaining about soaring that would yes. have about soaring and uh yeah rules for line of fire which to be fair whiz kids has definitely simplified those over the years we now have, they have. i think yeah. when these first sets came out we didn't have uh specific colors and uh improved targeting colors and like all that kind of fun stuff but uh yeah, that is you know yeah, that is it for for mechanics. This, um, you know, I know I'll save my final thoughts till later. But um, he really he really lit into the mechanics, and a lot has changed since then. His whole super strength about picking up a tree, which we made fun of, Can't um, tear stuff out of the map. So like that that is him as like an RPG main person, not yeah. understanding the mechanics of a game, being like he thinks. We're in an right. RPG where it's this made-up world where we have rules, but it's really us talking is playing the game. So you can interact with every object in the world because that's how D and D or whatever works. Right? Hey, can I, you know, rip up this tree? That's that's like how he's looking at it. Versus like, well, these are the mechanics of the game. We have objects that represent things. You cannot rip something out of the map because we have nothing to represent that. So it's just it's him uh, not being a very adaptable gamer, in my opinion, really. Uh, to meme him up there at the end, but yeah, and yeah. nowadays it, we we do have some at it special a, powers that generate objects or something. From the map, yeah, right. But I think do we get yeah, this is akin that? to being like, uh, rather than getting into this fight or continuing this fight, <laughs> I'm going to try and uh, persuade the Hulk to like stop fighting. Right? Why isn't that not a mechanic in the game? It's like, well, because this is a this is a different style of game. It's not yeah. this, like it's not you're not actually role playing this and character. You're using this character to punch that character. I will also say one thing, because something that existed uh, at the time was this Infinity Challenge. I'm trying to remember. Uh, OK, it was Mutant Mayhem. So it gets solved later. But like literally the feet rip it up uh, can generate a light object as if you are ripping up the ground or whatever, ripping up a tree like that's what the entire feet rip it up is for. Where if you have super strength. Before a target begins a move as part of a move, power, or free action, give it a light object from outside the game where it's supposed to mimic you ripping up the map or whatever, and then you, now you have an object. So a lot of his problems are solved later on. Flavor, everything. Not even that later um, on, yeah. 
not even that later on. Yeah, Mutant Mayhem too, right? So I think, uh, I, yeah. Anyways, let's. I'll, I'll finish off here. Uh, this is what he has. Making Heroclix into a comic book game. Though this is a subjective opinion. Oh, wow, I'm glad he finally says that his opinion is subjective. subjective. <laughs> what a guy. Uh, players will have to put some effort into giving these miniatures personality found in the comics, i.e. Blade, Taste the Fury of Fire Lord, rather than I roll a 10 and hit, or Annihilus smacks Kingpin, who's your daddy now? If, uh, if yes. someone said that classic to me, Annihilus King. phrase. I have smacked <laughs> Q Kingpin, who's your daddy now? Uh what good flavor Gosh. for Annihilus. He could have, I don't know, he could have chosen people that have catchphrases like Wolverine, best there is at what I, like he could have chosen sure. anything and he, ch- and he chose Annihilus. Or Spider-Man Max like Kingpin, dodging an attack now? and saying like my spider sense is tingling right. or, you know, tingling. yeah, something. Why did he choose? Literally Annihilus who like speaks <sighs> in weird, not human ways. He's like, let's turn this into a comic book game by saying, ah, yes, these very comic book things these characters have never Taste said. the what? fury of Fire Lord. Lord. Even Blade uh, can see the... Even Blade can taste the, the, the sugar fury. crystals and cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyways, he continues. With non-team figures, it pretty much felt like we were moving miniatures around a board rather than invoking comic book fights. Of course, adding personality to a bunch of stats isn't unique to Heroclix and is a pretty common problem in a miniature and RPG games. Hopefully, with actual teams, scenarios, and, gasp, GMs, games will feel more like comic books than WWF Smackdowns. Hey, yo, what the hell? What, what the? Whoa! Wow. Watch it, buddy. What's the problem with WWF Smackdowns? here is Smackdown? when we, we find out that Washu is truly the villain of this story. First Dude. of all, that's yeah. World Wildlife Foundation now, right. buddy. Uh, it still was WWF back then, but second of all, man, if only Washu could see that WWE is now a part of Euroclix. <laughs> How am I going to add flavor to this game when all I can use is WWE figures who are known to be flavorless? They don't have catchphrases or I don't know. Yeah, man. Dude, what a guy. What a... Wow. Ugh. Finally. Anyways, continuing on. Finally, it shouldn't be too difficult to tweak the mechanics to simulate comic book physics. Oh, here we go. For example, if a character has super strength and knocks back another figure, instead of moving it one space back per click of damage, the figure moves 1d6 spaces per click. What? Hey, so, uh... Hey, so guess what, Washu? There's actually a... <laughs> there's actually a power in the game... <laughs> Where you roll, where you roll a d six and you and you knock someone back. Goodness gracious! Uh, to continue with his comic book idea of flavor, telekinesis has a range of effect. A character may make a heroic attack and add one d six on his attack roll if he has, if he takes two actions, pushes, and all his teammates are knocked out. What? I'm sorry. Wait, telekinesis has a range so, of effect. Period. A heroic action. A heroic Her- telekinesis attack. has a range of effect. Like, you could TK a bubble of people? I guess that'd be interesting, but... I don't know what he means, yeah. Yeah, a range of effect. Unless, was TK not, like, back then... So I think that might be talking about how TK was something about adjacency and moving a character 10 squares. So this would be, like, I could move somebody that's further away from me, which is now how TK works. But I, I want to know more about, so, like, an epic action that adds 1d6 on the attack roll. So you're rolling three dice. If you take two actions, push, and all your teammates are knocked out. Like, so all my teammates have to be off the map. I'm the last figure. And then I get to take two actions, push, and then roll three oh, dice. Each. I don't know what he means by this. I think he had an aneurysm. It sounds awful. And, like, for someone that was getting mad about how, like, soaring and hovering were complicated, this is a terrible base, like, game element to include. This would be pretty bad. Yikes. 
ah, oh, you finally you finally knocked out all of my characters except one. Well, now I will take a double power action, push myself, and add a d6 to He's my attack add roll. D6 to do two actions. <laughs> Uh, no, this guy, hopefully this guy, here. this Washu, was indeed hired on by WizKids at some point to make these changes. Oh my gosh. Do you imagine if if we, we get through, like, talking about the ridiculousness of this and, like, all his weird ideas for hero clicks, and it's like, oh yeah, this guy works there now, don't you know? <laughs> that would be whack. Um, what else do he say? Each character has a special ability which becomes optional that is always available. So it's a trait. Um... But the figure requires two actions and doesn't push to use it, and so on. Well, that doesn't even. That's so. It's like you always nothing. have a special ability, so like you always have a power. I always have a power. You always yeah. have. The figure requires two actions, so it. So it's not a. Is it? Is it a double power action or just he's so just like, saying it takes two actions? Like I, actions I always have pulse wave available. Be, push, yeah, and it's and always optional. It? But to use it, it's a double power it's action. Double power that action doesn't that's not push good. to. How no, is that good? This How is that good worse. for comic book physics either? What are you talking about? No, that's very uh, com- that is very comic book physics cuz if I if I was like Thor it? and I'm always like super strong it would tire me out to oh, to use my super strength, right? Like I would be like, "Oh, that really took it out of me to use that thing that I always am, which is super strong." Of course. Of I'm course. super tired it's now. So difficult for Thor to I will have to his, rest. His powers? <laughs> Uh he, he Spider Man's like uh, I'm gonna try and dodge this bullet, but I don't know if I've got it in me. Takes it out of me to use you know, my you know me, Spider Man. <laughs> once I once I dodge one thing, I'm pretty much out. Yeah, for, I gotta I gotta rest. I dodged that thing earlier. You know what? I'm gonna choose yeah. to not dodge this thing. I'm gonna choose yeah. to not use my spider senses right now. I'm glad that's an option I have. <laughs> And in doing that, I won't be tired from getting hit with this bullet. Uh, good thing I didn't dodge that and get real tired from uh, doing so. Oh, gosh. Yeah, oh, obviously, gosh. obviously tweaking the mechanics like this upsets the game balance. It upsets me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think it upsets the game balance, but it, it's pretty upsetting it, to it me. It upsets That's me. Funny. Uh... Obviously, tweaking mechanics like this upsets the game balance. What a fucking gosh. But RPGers are, are used to that sort of thing. You're just not a quirky RPGer, Simeon. Yeah. That's why you're, you're not, not used part to that of RPG.net. Oh my gosh. You want to so, you want to finish this yeah. guy's uh conclusion here? Conclusion. HeroClix is obviously targeted towards the younger player and the collector. Also, I think the person, I think this E in that beat Washu was like a younger kid and that's why he's like obviously this child was he able to uh, beat me because that's the target audience their yeah, thug was hilarious. too powerful for my fire lord who is a uh, only 97 points like that's the other thing would you have wanted fire lord to be more points and you still got beat by a thug uh, so Heroclix is obviously targeted towards the younger player and collector. The typical SeriousRPG.net player will find the mechanics lacking. They're a different breed here at RPG.net. But will, it invite, <laughs> but will invite the Heroclix player to bring the miniatures by his duplicate commons. More casual RPG players will tweak the rules, though RPGers always do that miniature games oh miniature gamers might as well stick to their own systems but boy do those <sighs> miniatures look asterisk asterisk nice asterisk asterisk that is that's the end of the review oh i will read God. the blur the tiny blurb now Oh. Uh, which is targeted towards the young audience. Hero Clicks doesn't offer the tactical variety miniature players want or capture the comic book feel RPGers desire. But boy, do those miniatures look nice. Pretty much the, the last, the conclusion, I guess, was what I just read again. Uh, yeah, so this is Washu, who, let's see here. Let's see. Washu has not posted anything since about 2003. Uh mm. 
hopefully they're still out there. Maybe they they picked up uh, Hero Clicks years later. It did say that that article was updated or was edited in yeah. August of 2017, but uh, must have just been for like they they must have just fixed some wording or something because it doesn't look like their opinions changed at all to update with the current no, Hero yeah, yeah, yikes. You just absolutely dogged on it. I I want to find him. We we got to track him down. Let's <laughs> Hey guys, we can dox uh Washu here. Uh let's get him to play some modern hero clicks. You know, only against like Isaac a, uh, Arnold Berkowitz though. So of, of he course. can be like, "Of course it's of targeted course it's towards younger, younger players. Audience. I can't believe you beat my 97 point Fire Lord. Fire Lord, yeah. Like, dude, Spends half the game trying to break guy, away from generic thug. This guy, I feel like he came in biasedly and like did not want to have like a good time. You know what I mean? I think he like came in being like, "Ugh, more stupid, like clicky, turny dials, mage knight, whatever." It's not an RPG, and like some, I don't know. It's just strange. Oh, Washu here is truly, truly a, a different breed. I, yeah, uh, I don't get him. But, you know, I hope he, if still alive, still exists out there somewhere, um, we got to find this guy. Get him to play modern hero clicks. Like uh, like when they, they go and they grab uh, someone from, like, you know, Smosh does whatever, right? The What's the internet thing? Where it's like they go and they, they grab him and it's like, hey, let's hang out for a little bit. Let's, let's like, go find this guy. Like, uh, let's play some modern hero clicks. Daniel Tosh's web redemption. Daniel Tosh. Yeah, web redemption. There you Famous go. Famous comedian can, Daniel Tosh. We can yeah, yeah, we can we can web redeem Washu here, right? <laughs> I don't know that Gene Gray comment pre I guess it was 2002. It was a simpler time. Uh clearly a man of that era. I'll give him a pass on the the, the terrible jokes that were made back in the day. Yeah. They were rough. They were like yikes, dude. Um, what what's a good rating scale for this this thread here? This review of Hero Clicks. Let's I don't know something early two thousand y. If if we if you had to rate yeah, this man, from a um, uh, Marvel superheroes role playing game uh, to a Marvel saga, so uh, too number crunchy, too, too, too abstract, to too, abstract. <laughs> too simple. Yeah, too too simple to too abstract. Where where does this review of Hero Clicks? In 2002, by old Washu here. Oh, Washu! Oh, uh, where does that end up? I'm gonna... Oh, man. I'm going to say, on a scale of weird RPG games, this would be like a, a Washu's Magical Palace extreme RPG excellent time. That's going to be my <laughs> game name feel. that I rate it, which equals about like a man I, factoring in the age. From a one to ten, where we yeah, like, factoring fat, in the, like where the does that age line up in which this was written? So right. not based off of like the current. So obviously this wasn't written based off of the twenty twenty or yeah twenty twenty one stuff. I'm still gonna give him like a four out of ten because man. This this seems like it was extremely biased from the get go, and it just got more biased. And you really got like a an inside glimpse of Washu's brain and how just absolutely beaten they were when when that thug KO'd Fire Lord in that attack, and they just they gave up on everything. And they just you know at, from that point, Hero Clicks was not going to get a fair and biased review by any means. Yeah, we'll agree with it. When he says champions, does he mean like he can't mean like the new card game that's like champions? Was there an old Marvel Champions? Is that is that what he's referring to? So that was one that I I looked up and yeah, there was a a Marvel Champions RPG style game that came out right around. I think it was actually in like the eighties. Okay, uh, Marvel Champions. I'm RPG. gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna name I'm gonna rate this a. Uh, Maybe you'll like Hero Skate better. That'll be my my rating for this, <laughs> since they their powers and stats don't change and they take damage. If that's like a big thing, um, and because the map is three D, you can rip up a tree if that's so important to this guy. Uh, well, it would just it would just be comic accurate if I could, yeah, 
if I'm playing as the Hulk, clearly the Hulk's going to smack someone with a tree that's in the ground rather than like a garbage can or a dumpster or a tire or whatever. Also, I, I did like the line about how all RPGers will make up their own rules anyhow. Like that's what they do. But isn't that what like all casual venues do when they, you know, four hundred points reverse dial, uh, four hundred points like every other yeah. action has to have a react. I don't know a reaction. Whenever we make alternate build stuff, that's like exactly what this person's talking about. So. Yeah, yeah, I feel like the there wasn't really a fair shake. You gotta you gotta really give Hero Clicks like five years to get a good idea of if you like it or not. Yeah, that's what I that's what I tell people. I'm like, oh man, you don't like One Piece? Just give it a good five. Watch it for five years and uh, tell me how you feel about it uh, later on. No, kidding, of course. Um, yeah, dude, he really like he didn't let the game grow. It was like brand new, and I get it when you do like a brand new review and stuff. It's like, yo, why is the game you know, brand new? Whatever. And he just, I didn't understand that it was like a living game, you know, that it, it, it's going to change over time. It's not just like, this is what you get. He was just doing very, and obviously you can't go back in time and be like, hey man, you don't know this, but here is going to go on for like 20 something years actually. And it'll change and it'll have all these cool things. So what you're complaining about, like, you know, obviously he doesn't know all that. So I'll give him slight benefit of the doubt for some of this stuff, just because it is just dated to the time. But yeah, what, uh. What a guy! Still, we gotta find Washu. We gotta, we gotta make him play. Uh, let's actually make him play skirmish. I, I guarantee that will make him not feel like it's a WWF <laughs> with, with WWE figures. Yeah, let's make him play skirmish WWE. Oh my gosh, I would die. Uh, that would be probably one of the longest games you could play. One of the longest yes. hero click games. Yes. Not only skirmish, but also with WWE figures. And because it would be a WWE only thing, you wouldn't even get grand entrance. So, you, well, I guess skirmish you're rules your place in the middle four. anyhow. So yeah, your place in the middle. Matter. Fine. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, that's funny. All right, let's uh, let's finish this episode up and answer some listener questions, shall we? There are dozens of us. Dozens. In the Discord, hey, if you want to be on our Discord and give us not only listener questions every week, but play Bad Samaritan from time to time, and also give us suggestions for our 400th episode, which is only 11 weeks away. Very excited for that. Um, you can do so by joining us on Patreon for as little as a buck a month. One dollar a month. You get all the cool freeness of hanging out in our Discord server, hanging out with Simeon and I. It's pretty cool. Uh, playing Bad Sam and doing all sorts of stuff and what not. And then also you get entered in for giveaways and stuff every month. It's uh, it's crazy fun. You know, this last month I gave away a bunch of WWE stuff because that was the, like, October was when we made Extreme Rules. So I gave away, like, an Ultimate Warrior LE and a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah. Join our Patreon. Support the show. Uh, support us it, it goes really far in like getting really cool action tokens for you guys and making really cool content for youtube and making the podcast uh, a sound and be as cool as it does anyways we had some questions from the show uh el presidente uh aka chance mccall asks eternals is coming up what is your favorite part of losing to unimind calder and i will say i've only lost to unimind once and that was the first tournament i ever played in and i've beat unimind uh, by players who are fielding him, uh, like Matt Esbrook, beat Matt Esbrook playing Unimind, and I also uh, beat Unimind for my States win. So my favorite part of losing to Unimind is how little I ever actually did it. Uh, thank you for that. <laughs> uh, El Presidente goes on to ask, who is my favorite Eternal? Um, none of them. None of them. I can't Eternal. I guess I haven't seen the movie yet. I've seen the trailer. I think... Uh, if I had to choose a favorite Eternal, it would be the one that goes, uh, I guess King Hyperion is my favorite Eternal. The laser eye the keyword. One. Yeah, he's got laser eyes. Wait, does oh, King wait. Hyperion have the Eternal keyword? He apparently does. He huh. he has the Eternal keyword. He doesn't have the Eternals. Not nah, Eternal. Yeah, Eternal is the keyword. Eternal is not Eternals. Ah. So yeah, he's got it. I don't know how he is, but he is, I guess. Uh, he goes on to ask, Simeon, uh, oh, well, do you want to read this one? You want me to read this one? <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, Simeon, okay. why does Calder cuddle with Makari from the Mighty Thor when he sleeps? Uh, I would have to think that it's because if, if Calder didn't cuddle with Makari, Makari would use the discipline of speed to get away from him. So uh, sure, that has to sure. be it. We will be uh, skipping this 
fourth <laughs> question. Uh, I think we will also be skipping uh, Jackson's question. Uh, and I will read it. Uh, so Jackson says, if you had to pick which movie villain to be made into hero clicks, would you choose the Joker from The Dark Knight, Heath Ledger, or Mysterio, Spider-Man Far From Home, Jake Gyllenhaal? Uh, which would it be? Um, well, we already have Heath Ledger. We so do. technically, not that I would make a choice between the two, but I think a Far From Home set would be cool. A Spider-Man Far From Home and also mix in a Spider-Man Homecoming with it. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my only issue is, like, I don't know. That that Mysterio was pretty overpowered, so it would be hard to... And maybe, it, I don't know, maybe it was only overpowered from the aspect of, um, like, fooling Spider-Man right. or whatever. But the amount of, like, technology behind that Mysterio is pretty cool. I think that'd Pumping be out a really drone good standards figure. Yeah. End. Yeah. And, like, cool. not being able to be attacked until like you know you only have like one drone left or like with mm-hmm. when mysterio's within five squares of drone bystander like a drone bystander they can't be the target of an attack or something like that would yeah. be really solid i do like that too yeah uh he should have like ability that even when he dies he gets to like best the opposing teams like even when he died he like you know gave peter parker's identity or like whatever yeah um uh, Chance goes on to say, if you could make a Star Wars character into Hero Clicks, who would it be? And why is the correct answer Max Rebo of the Max Rebo band? Uh, actually, the correct, the correct answer is Watu. Um, <laughs> clearly, that's like the Star Wars character that we truly need. Or a uh, man running with Ice Cream Maker. That would also be a really good Star Wars character um, that needs to be Hero Clicks. Hero Clicks, <laughs> Clicks. I don't know. Anyway. Cre- I don't know what man running. Oh, you don't know cre- what I'm referencing? No. Uh, in so in Empire Strikes Back, uh, I believe he is literally he is running ice cream maker Star Wars guy. Okay, so in Empire he's Strikes like Back, extra? the yes, he is an extra, and he's just running through uh, whatever it's called. Uh, goodness gracious, he oh. is running through. What is it? What is the city in the clouds? This is Bespin? It's oh, not Bespin. Uh, it's uh, Cloud City, whatever the heck it's called, right? So he's just running, and he's got, like, a jumpsuit and everything, but he's literally just has just an ice cream maker. Like, that is, like, his prop. He is just running with an ice cream maker. <laughs> if you Google ice cream maker Star Wars guy, there is a ton of stuff. Uh, Cloud City. Is that, is that what it's called? Just Cloud City? And whatever. Anyways. Uh, they've made action figures of this guy. Wow. There, there's like this amazing cosplay that I am <laughs> there never knew existed. Figure. That is hilarious. Um, that is funny. Um, but yeah, yeah. So like this dude, Will Row Hood here, uh, is the guy carrying an ice cream maker. Uh, he was in a scene for only a few seconds, and no one would have ever guessed the impact that he would have made oh, on wow. Star Wars. So yeah, that that is and his prop. They... That's sort of like his futuristic whatever. In the Mandalorian, that's what uh, the best bars kept in, in like episode You're one. Kidding? It's, is it? No, they they reused, uh, almost like they ice probably made maker? like a replica of that original prop to make it look more legit to like the universe. But yeah. Uh, the guy pay like when he opens up the little thing. Yo, you're right. Wow. Oh my a, god, that's a cool that's callback. Hilarious. That's great. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't even notice, huh. dude. So like that's what he was, dude. He was keeping the he was keeping the best cars. <laughs> yeah, he was he was booking it with like I don't know millions <laughs> of credits you worth will. of. Yeah, that's pretty funny. No, I had never. I, I always like it when I see Star Wars figures that are like medical droid like numbers something 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 and then you look it up and it literally just has like a one second cameo where it popped into the screen as it was like scooting around in the background or something yeah it's just pretty good pretty good uh star wars characters i was gonna say young lando so that we could have childish gambino in uh hero clicks but there you go that's that's my only hot take um, all right, Simeon, with the 400th episode coming up, am I going to continue, Calder, me, the Dial H trend of quitting the podcast and pawning it off to the co-host like the Smiths did to Drew, like Drew did to Chris, and like Chris did to me? And he said, and finally, that Calder may do to Simeon. What do you think? 
uh, I think it's a, a high possibility. So those of you that don't know, um, Calder actually was approached by some Space Force uh, members, and he's needed on a secret cowboy space mission. So uh, yeah. the Ranch Hand in Space may be a series that ends up making it to either Netflix or, yeah. uh, I don't know, the moon. That is such a good idea. I don't think anyone has ever thought of putting like Western cowboys style, space. like cowboys in space. Like that's just genius. That would be great. Space, <laughs> a, a, a Western spacer, if you if you will, a West spacer. Yes, a uh, West spacer, bro. West that rolls spacer. off the freaking tongue. Yeah. If we had like some sort of blue collar guys, like I, uh, I don't know, like uh, say. A billboard installer is needed to, to <laughs> strap down a vinyl on the moon or or a meteor is coming to Earth. And the only way to stop it is by installing a giant vinyl. Uh, but it's easier to train the billboard installer how to be an astronaut than an <laughs> astronaut how to use straps. So they send the billboard installer into space with like a, a few weeks of training. And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> he saves oh, the planet because yes, yes, because blue collar worker knew knew best, and he's like, "Let's get it. Funny. Stay away from my daughter. I'm going to space with you now, Ben Affleck." I think he was in that movie. Yeah, he was in that movie. I don't even know what the heck you're talking about, but yeah, let's do it. It's gravity. How can I not think of? Uh, I can't think. I can't think of the movie. Oh no! Don't tell us. Uh, They'll let us know in the comment section below. Will, I know they will. Not will. Who's the famous bald actor? Vin guy? Diesel. Bruce uh, Willis. Older Bruce Willis. Why? Why did I think it was Will? Will Bruce's? Uh, no, Bruce Willis. <laughs> in the the movie where he's like an oil drill guy, Armageddon. Is that it, Bruce? No idea, dude. Willis Asteroid Movie Armageddon. Okay. Armageddon. We solved it. It has Billy Bob Thornton, Liv Tyler, who oh. is his daughter, and then Ben Affleck is the guy that's like dating his daughter. He's like, oh, I'll beat you up. Get off my oil rig. And then they send him all to space because Bruce Willis is like, I designed a super drill that only I understand how it works. Yeah, love it. It's love a great to see movie. It. Anyhow, that was a, that was entirely the plot of what I was describing, except uh, right. Variety. Except now we know what it's now we know what it's called. Yeah, the whole. Hey, is... Simeon, that was that was a really good description of the plot. You want to describe something else to me? I I think I do. Okay. Um, so if you're interested in going to space to install space billboards or uh, do do cowboy ranch hand space things. Right. Well, you just got to keep on dreaming. But if you want to wrangle. wake up to the cold, stark reality that is the real world, and you look around and you say, I want more things. I want more cool stuff in my life. Well, you should head on over to coolstuff.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com. And like always... Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional. Hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how okay. six yeah. people think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, the back's a Let the cat in here because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow.